So today I'm going to create this chain link animation which someone uh, requested. So I'm just going to start with a fresh scene. And the quickest way to create a chain link is to create a rectangle and uh, choose rounding. I'm just going to increase the rounding slightly, increase the width. So we've got a piece like that. I'm going to go to spline and choose a circle. This is going to be a cross section. And then I'm going to create a sweep. And I'm just going to put the circle and the rectangle into the sweep. And the circle needs to be above the rectangle. And now we've got this chain link piece, which we can uh, adjust on the fly, which is very handy. So that's a cross section. And this is the front section, like that. Adjust the rounding, something like that. So I'm just going to create. I'm just going to call this chain link, like that. So next we need a piece of string. Well, not literally, but uh, I'm just going to go to the front view. And I'm going to create a spline. Something like this, maybe. I'm just going to zoom out. Next, we need a cloner. So I'm just going to... Put the chain link piece into the cloner like that. Go to cloner, set it to object mode, and drag and drop the spline path in there. Uh, we need to rotate these chain link pieces, so I'm just going to go to transform and that looks about right 90 degrees along heading, maybe 90 degrees this way as well. Now the spacing in between each chain link piece is uh, kind of uneven, so I'm going to go back to corner. And where it says distribution, I'm going to set this to even. And now we've got a nice kind of equal distance going on in between each piece. I'm just going to increase the count slightly. That's pretty cool. Uh, the final step is I basically need each piece rotating in uh, 90 degree increments. So they don't basically uh, intersect in this manner. I want them to kind of uh, not touch each other, basically, but uh, intersect in the kind of chain sense. So I'm just going to go to Cloner and choose Effector, MoGraph Effector, Step, like that. And I don't need Scale on the Step Effector, so I'm just going to turn off Scale on the parameter. I'm going to choose Rotation. And uh, it's not the heading it's the pitch that we need. So you can see that's kind of what we want. And uh, there is a mathematical way to calculate the angle we need here. It's basically the number of clones, 11, multiplied by 90 degrees. Hit enter. So that is accurate. Now finally, uh, we've got this little problem. It looks like this is still kind of uh, too close for comfort. It's kind of looks like it might still be intersecting. That's because we need to, um, under Effector, set the spline, the step spline. If you just right click and go to Spline Presets, set that to Linear. And now we've got a much more uh, kind of even distribution, rotation. And that looks like it's going to work. Nothing's touching. So uh, finally, I need something to attach this to. So I'm just going to create a torus. It's the quickest uh, object to create. I'm just going to move it up. I'm just going to slot it in actually like that. Hopefully that should be it. Just make sure it's not touching. Great. And now uh, it's time for the dynamics. So the torus, I'm going to give it a simulation tag rigid body and set it to static mesh, which means it just stays still. The chain link, the cloner, I'm going to give it a rigid body, but I'm going to choose individual elements all, so each piece kind of behaves uh, individually, each cloner. So I'm just going to play this back, boom, it just explodes. So what we need to do is um, we need to choose moving mesh, which is a much more uh, 
kind of better calculation algorithm when it comes to things that intersect and they're quite and they're quite complicated and um, so I'm just going to choose moving mesh play it back hopefully it should hold it's great oh we've got a break so there's a few uh, factors that can cause a break and how to adjust it is a uh, can be tricky sometimes so I'm just going to play this back and uh, I'm going to reduce collision noise. I'm going to actually reduce friction and bounce can stay. See if that makes a difference. Still got a break. Now, sometimes uh, choosing custom center can fix things for some reason. Yeah, it kind of worked, but. Um, does cause some kind of tangling sometimes but uh, if that doesn't work you can uh, try fiddling with drag that sometimes helps just adding a bit of drag it's kind of a cheat but a um, bit of wind resistance kind of stops them from uh, falling too hard and therefore breaking so you've got that option There we go. And uh, as usual, uh, this is running very slow. Moving mesh is uh, notoriously slow, so you can uh, always bake the cache, bake all, and then we can watch it back in real time, hopefully. There we go, much better. So that's the end of that quick tutorial and uh, thanks for watching.